All right, so here's a really quick demo on how to create a counter using a variable. So let's go ahead and insert a shape. Doesn't really need to matter what shape it is, so we're just going to do this here. And what I want to do on the shape is I want to add a motion path. So I'm going to go to animations. I'm going to add a motion path. We'll just use a line motion path. And um, you can just drag this down. I'm just going to drag it down the screen so it's much more dramatic for you. All right. So what we have here is we have a motion path. We're going to set the duration at one second. Okay, so we know that when we animate it, this is going to last one second. So let's go ahead and preview this. And it's one second. So that's a, to complete the animation was one second. So now we can use that as a counter, right? So we know this is one second. So let's do something. So I want to have a variable. Then I can change the uh, number on that variable using the counter. So let's go ahead and add a variable. So we're going to create a new variable. We'll just call this counter. So create a new variable. We'll just call it counter. So it's just counting um, stuff. And we're going to make it a number variable and we'll say it starts at zero. So we have our variable called counter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a reference so we can see the variable change. So I'm going to go to insert text box and I'll just draw that across here. And usually the reference is just going to be percentage sign, the name of the variable, and percentage sign. And that'll then display the value of that variable. We're going to go to insert and do reference. Choose our variable. And you can see that I have it there. And I'm going to make it much larger so we can see it. So we have a variable. So if, you're ever, if you've never worked with variables, essentially it's a three-step process. You need to create the variable. In this case, we have one called counter. And a variable is the bucket. It just holds stuff. In this case, it's holding uh, this number. And this number, we want it to change. So it's just going to keep holding the value of that number as it changes. So we create a variable. We hold the number or the value, right? Um, so we um, have a trigger that's going to change the value of that variable. And then we have another trigger that we can use the value of the variable. And then we're just going to do something really simple. So we created our variable, which is called counter. Now what we want to do is we want to adjust the value of the variable. So when do we adjust the value? Well, let's do it when this, this right here, when the animation ends, let's go ahead and adjust the value of the variable. So we're going to go ahead and add a trigger. What do I want to do? I want to adjust the value of the variable. So choose my variable, counter. And in this case, it's pretty straightforward. If you've never worked with variables, just click on these things and see what they say, right? Worst thing is you're going to mess it up, and then you can just restart it. So adjust the value of the counter variable. We're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to add, and we're going to add the value of 1. When, so what do you want to do? We want to adjust the variable. When do we want to adjust it? And we'll say when the animation completes. So which animation? This rectangle on that motion path one. So if we read through it, we're going to adjust the value of that variable, the counter, by adding one to it every time the animation completes for this object. And we'll be able to see it here. So the starting value is going to be zero, right? So we're going to preview this. And it's going to start animating. And then you can see it adjusted. Now I want to use a looping animation to keep the counter moving. So we're going to go ahead and add another trigger on here. What do I want to do? I want this to keep kind of essentially going up and down, right? So what do I want to do? I want to uh, move this rectangle on motion path 1. When, again, what do I want to do? I want to move the rectangle. When do I want it to move? When the animation completes. Well, which animation? The animation of that rectangle a motion path one. So this is going to go, it's going to re-trigger, and it's going to keep uh, keep moving. So what do we have going on here? So we've got this starting, right? So it's just going to start automatically when the slide starts. It's going to move along the motion path. It's going to do two things. One, it's going to add one to the variable. And then because the motion path animation completed, we've got this trigger here to have it go again. And then what's going to happen when it goes again? It's going to change this number again. It's just going to keep adding 1. So let's go ahead and preview this. And we should see the number just continue. And you can see how that works. 
And now we know this is counting off every five seconds. What's cool with these triggers like this, if let's say you were building a little clock counter, uh, you can move this off here and the user could see the variable, so the number changing, but they don't really see this little thing moving. So that's how you use that. Now some people use this as like a countdown timer and if you want to use math you can add variables and triggers in there based on like when it hits 60 seconds then add one to the next variable so you can make it look like a, a clock or digital timer or something like that. We're not going to worry about that. What we'll do since we're talking about variables, that three step process, you create a variable and then you uh, trigger a change to the value of the variable which is what we're doing here. Now that you have a value you can do something. Now in this case we're just displaying it and that might be fine if you're building a little clock or something, a countdown, uh, something like that. Uh, the other thing we could do is we could trigger something to happen once it reaches uh, a certain number, right? So let's go ahead and do this. We're just going to insert a character. Uh, we'll just uh, grab any character here. And um, let's crop her up just so we can see her a little bit better. All right, so we've got our character here. And she's really, she's going to be happy. So let's go ahead and change her expression to happy. She's happy, but she's only going to be happy once you've counted to 10. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. What do I want to do? I want to change the state of this character. Or actually, I need to change her back. So let's go ahead backwards. So I want to change this, change the state of this character to happy. When, when this timer here reaches 10. So let's go add a trigger. So what do I want to do? Change the state of the character to happy when, when, and this is where you can, there's a few different ways, but we'll say when variable changes. Which variable? The counter. Well, what's happening? This is where we need conditions. So the variable is going to change. So we're going to add a condition on here. So the variable is changing. It's going to change every time it hits a number, right? One, two, three. What we want to do is say if variable, choose our variable if counter. And if you're not if you're not familiar with this type of verbiage, right? This most people aren't because we're not programmers. Again, just click on these drop downs so you can kind of figure it out. So if counter is equal to the value of, and we'll say ten. We hit OK. And so now what should happen is when this hits 10, she's going to be really happy. Right? And so once it hits 10, I probably should have done 5 so we don't have to wait. But it's going to hit 10 and then we should see the state change here. And there you go. So a lot of neat things you can do. So a couple things that's that we showed in here. So we showed how to do a looping animation, right? And then that looping animation, we're using a variable, so we're adjusting the value of the variable so we can see the number uh, increase. And you could do the opposite. You could have a starting value and have it decrease in like a countdown. And then uh, because that variable is changing, we were able to uh, do something. In this case, we're able to change the state of a character. So uh, we have a looping animation. Uh, we have a counter, uh, trigger counter. And then the other thing is, we talked a little about variables and variables is that three step process. Create the variable, adjust the value of the variable and then once you have certain values you can do things. So it's usually like trigger something based on the value of the variable. So that's kind of a, the basics. But anyway that's a really quick overview and then if you have any questions jump in the community and ask. And we have all those other getting started tutorials for Storyline. So that's a great place to learn more about working with variables and animations.